Good afternoon. I am Council Member Rory Lansman, Chair of the Committee on the Justice System, and we are joined by Council Members uh, Lewis, Torres, and Cohen. And we are here today to vote on Council Member Levin's reporting bill, Intro 1156A, addressing the multi agency response to community hotspots or MARCH. MARCH operations are conducted at nightlife establishments by agencies such as the FDNY, Department of Health and Mental Hygiene, State Liquor Authority, Department of Environmental Protection, and the Department of Buildings. The proposed bill will provide greater transparency around these operations and aims to reduce the unintended consequences for businesses involved. These operations have raised concerns because they are conducted unannounced, they occur at peak weekend hours when patrons are there, and we have heard testimony that as a result of all this, they can have a negative impact on venues' ability to remain in business, even when no violations are found, which happens with some regularity. While these operations, which are often referred to as raids because of their unannounced and dramatic execution, may be reasonably intended for enforcement of building, fire, or health codes, this bill proposes an alternative providing advance notice to potentially targeted businesses and engendering compliance that way without placing such a heavy burden on small businesses already struggling to survive. The fixes proposed in this bill are all the more urgent because the data shows that March operations occur more regularly in minority communities or venues frequented by minority patrons, even when business owners have gone out of their way to cooperate. Council Member Levin's bill also seeks to help us evaluate the efficacy of these operations by requiring more detailed information about the triggers for March actions, how they are conducted, and how often they result in citations or fines. <clears throat> With that, I'd like to give Council Member Levin the opportunity to make some remarks regarding his bill, and then we can proceed to a vote. Council Member Levin. Thank you very much, Chair Lansman. Uh, I'm very proud to see this bill coming before the committee today for a vote. The Interagency Task Force is comprised of representatives from the NYPD, Fire Department, Health Department, State Liquor Authority, Department of Environmental Protection, and Department of Buildings. Led by the NYPD, the March conducts raids of nightlife venues purportedly in response to community complaints, assessments of incidents that have occurred within or around a venue, and or whether that venue has a history of, quote, cooperating with authorities, close quote. This vague operations order is ripe for misconduct. Business owners are not given information on how or why operations are conducted and have shared shocking stories about late night raids that har have harassed venues and have shut down establishments. Many bars and restaurants that have been marched upon have had to pay thousands of dollars in fines for minor violations, and others have had to close their doors due to the high costs and loss of customers. At a hearing several months ago, the question was raised of whether the task force should even exist at all. I am still not convinced that it is necessary, and I am glad that this bill will better support businesses against these raids and shine a light on a long shrouded process. Following significant feedback and concerning firsthand reports from local venues and advocates, we updated the bill to require proactive outreach to businesses and enact stronger oversight of how, when, and why these raids occur. Protecting local businesses and preserving New York's nightlife culture is core to our city's well-being. We cannot continue to let harmful nighttime raids happen without clarity on whether March should have, been, should have even showed up in the first place. I want to thank uh, my colleague, Councilmember Rafael Espinal, um, who's been a leader in standing up for the rights of nightlife venues and has been incredibly supportive of this legislation. I'd also like to thank the committee chair and staff, including Maxwell Camper williams and my legislator director, Elizabeth Adams. Um, we think that this, this bill will uh, shine a bright light on um, this long-shrouded uh, activity on the part of the city and, um, and state authorities and, um, and that should never be. We, transparency is, is the hallmark of good government, and um, for too long this has been uh, an, a uh, woefully untransparent uh, action. So with that, I'll, I'll turn it back over to the chair, and thank you very much for your support. Thank you. Are any other council members wish to make a statement or a comment? 
I would note that we've been joined by the Majority Leader, Council Member Lori Cumbo, and with that, I would ask that a roll call be taken. William Martin, Committee Clerk, Roll Call Vote Committee on Justice System, Introduction 1156A. Chair Lentzman. Aye. Cohen. Uh, permission to explain my vote, even though the chair gave me an opportunity to speak before, which I passed on. <laughs> sure. Uh, I just want to briefly say that, uh, you know, I'm a co-sponsor of this legislation, uh, but I, I think that the March program overall is of value. Uh, you know, I have had some uh, difficult venues who uh, really have caused, uh, you know, a real hardship on their neighbors. Uh, but I, I think that the goals of this legislation trying to uh, put a little sunshine on this program are, uh, are, are ones that I'm able to support. So for that reason, I'm going to vote aye. Combo. I vote aye. Torres. I vote aye. Lewis. Aye. By a vote of five in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and no abstention, the item has been adopted by the committee. Thank you. That will conclude our hearing, except that I would like to leave the vote open for the maximum time allowable, which, if I'm not mistaken, is 15 minutes. Thank you. Have a good afternoon, everyone.